Have you ever read a book and thought to yourself, I am gonna recommend this to everyone I know. For me, this is that book. This is How They Tell Me the World Ends by Nicole Perlroth is probably my favorite cybersecurity book I have ever read. So on today's episode, we're gonna do a deep dive on the cyber arms race and how it's already out of control. Let's go. Welcome to Cyber Studies in the fifth installation of Book Club, where we do these deep dives on critical points and interesting facts on hacking and cybersecurity books. My name is Giovanni. Thank you so much for stopping. Holy cow, folks. If I could do it all over again, this would be the first book I read or listen to. Nicole Perlroth covers so many topics mentioned in other books, from vulnerable infrastructure landscapes to threat actors trying to exploit them. She describes things in the book in such a cinematic way that I really look forward to the time I get to listen as she explains heavy hitters like Stuxnet, Operation Aurora, Not Pieta, WannaCry, Dark Tequila, Solar Winds, and numerous data breaches that change cybersecurity in the field it is today. Perlroth dives into a lot of these topics on zero days, and that's kind of like the big emphasis of the book. Uh, how it goes from these bug bounties, volunteer-based style things for like the betterment of IT, all the way into these like $1 million proof of concepts where they're done through these back channels shrouded in secrecy. And the, the book does a really good job illustrating that de-evolution as time goes, uh, where the United States has the main market share of it and loses control of it very quickly. Uh, but the book actually resembles a lot of this like all-you-can-eat buffet style like restaurants where you get to dive into these little topics, these little things, and then if you found something that was of interest to you, you can almost go back into it with like a uh, an auxiliary book, Countdown to Zero Day, um, Sandworm, what have you. All these subjects are, are kind of covered in this book and allows you for to go back more if you wanted to get more granular with it. So while there's a lot of things this book covers, the three main topics I wanna to go over in today's video is the cyber weapons arms race, vulnerabilities and threats, and geopolitical implications. So arguably my favorite part is the cyber weapons arms race. This dynamic and intricate like, struggle going on throughout the entire book is the undertone the reader has to endure. Small vendors like iDefense had these cash for bug models that worked to remediate vulnerabilities and were semi-successful. Bugs found by kind Samaritans trying to do the right thing would often fetch for a couple hundred bucks and lead to proper patches and software. These quickly changed because as time went on across the street, the same bugs were fetching for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in the black market. You eventually saw this shift where again, it's like, hey, you can either do the right thing, get a pat on the back, or received this massive payday and then you weren't really put on blast for it. There really were no repercussions here. And this all kind of happened at the expense of the taxpayers uh, because the main buyers were these government bodies. These entities invested heavily in the development of cyber weapons to serve various objectives such as espionage, information gathering, and the disruption of critical infrastructure. Intelligence gathering was a major part in these cyber weapons because it allowed the threat actors, the you know opposing you know parties, to gather things from corporations, organizations, or even you know nation states, whether it was military trade secrets or just intellectual property. You, you do kind of see the lines get blurred a little bit as time goes from like ordinary traditional espionage into the cyber warfare. Um, she does a really good job explaining on some of these like declassified uh, cases where back in the day it was something as simple as an implant. You know, they'd go in at an embassy and they would plant some sort of bug to pull information. Now we're leveraging things that are kind of built into the operating system that are, are really hard to go through and patch. And you start seeing things like supply chains, you know, what have you, that, that, that make this completely different than what it used to be back in the day. And it's kind of hard to make a determination on whether I, this is like an act of war versus espionage because this hasn't happened in our history of, you know, military governance. And, and there's, there's a, a level of competency and things that we're trying to catch up with, but she does a really good job explaining these uh, hurdles that we have to make collectively uh, because the, the way we're going, we're kind of going towards a cliff 
and we don't really know how to traverse this. It, it's really tough. Again, I really wish I would have read this book first compared to the other books I had read because this does such a great job piecing everything together and making it like a holistic view on like how bad the situation really is. In the ever evolving landscape of cybersecurity, vulnerabilities and threats were on the forefront. Uh, understanding these technical competencies going into this book was extremely important, whether it was buffer overflows, you know, injection of code, or even just like plain social engineering. The golden goose here were these zero day vulnerabilities. You kind of see Nicole going into these like social dinners or these like closed door events with the exploit developers. And as she kind of dove more into the subject, she realized that she should just stick to eating her salmon dinner because things kind of got out of control really quickly. And she realized that she was in a space that maybe wasn't the best for her. With government and military bodies alike, exploits were being used against adversaries pose an immediate threat to their own environment. With exploit kits being unleashed, all it would take is an experienced reverse engineer to turn that weapon into something else and send it right back to the originator. Responsible disclosure, or lack thereof, is another one of these examples where uh, intel agencies or nation state threat actors were able to take advantage of something that was under the hood, very close to the metal, and wasn't remediated for quite some time. It was about a decade or in some change. And this allowed the majority, if not all, of Windows users to be susceptible to attacks. Now, there was no repercussions or any, you know, need to disclose these. And I think it actually happened because of a software leak or a, uh, a breach where the stuff was put out there into the open and then it was immediately fixed because it was brought to the vendor's attention. But this kind of stuff is where it gets kind of fuzzy and those lines get blurry again because it's in the nation military's best interest to have these things in the back pocket. But then it really does make it the Wild West where uh, it, anything goes and, until some sort of policy is put into place. Trying my best to be as politically free as possible. You see in this chapter of the book where we talk about the advanced persistent threats, the hacktivist groups, the nation states, we're starting to inject and cross those you know, state lines. You see groups like uh, Darkseid, Lazarus, APT29, Anonymous, Cozy Bear, what have you, doing things like uh, political, you know, manipulation, uh, tampering. You start to see things like ransomware and media firms. You see intellectual property theft. And it's crazy because it's in a use case to explain the importance of putting sanctions, policies, what have you, on cyber warfare. But it's, it's spooky to think how connected our world is and how vulnerable it has become via those conveniences. Geopolitical dynamics are kind of often categorized in this way where propaganda, disinformation, things that kind of further specific parties' agendas, it makes it really hard for all the kids to play together nicely, right? <laughs> and, and you look at it from like a grand scale, um, we're, we're all kind of stuck in the middle hoping that someone will put their sword down first, right? In order for like a cyber ceasefire to happen, you basically need one nation to say, hey, we're not gonna do this anymore with hopes that our good faith will carry over and not allow another nation to basically double down and take advantage of an opportunity, right? And so this gets really complicated really fast, but you basically need to have some sort of thing put in place to where folks just kind of step away and kind of go back to things how they were. In the world of cyber warfare, it's like a global chess game where nations are the players and the stakes are incredibly high. It's kind of like setting the rules for the game as you're currently playing it, right? Where you can make a move and you kind of, you set the rule to where you can do something with hopes that it doesn't backfire and allow your opponent to capitalize on that same move that, that far exceeds the benefits that you put in place. Proroff shows us how hard it is to establish norms of cybersecurity, figuring out who's behind a cyber attack, and it's often a guessing game, making it really hard to appropriately respond to situations or even establish attribution. I think this section is where she came up with the title of the book because it, it's easy to say that, you know, these problems are small in comparison to like biological or nuclear capabilities, but, but think to yourself, ask yourself, 
What would happen if the electricity, the ways of us getting groceries or, or you know, any of these means of living, uh, transportation, what have you, what if all of that just went away one day? You know, like so some some food for thought there. Like this this could be a really big issue. This could be how the world ends. I know I've mentioned numerous times that this is the book I wish I would have started with, but there are many topics that you can do deeper dives on by visiting the playlist right here, where we cover numerous cybersecurity books in the book club series. Thank you very much and have a good one.